What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on learning SketchUp in 30 days by learning how to model different piping with different kinds of flanges and other things like that. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is going to be important because it's going to teach you how circles work a little bit more inside of SketchUp. And so the first thing I wanna talk about is how modeling along a path using piping is affected by the path that you're using. So we've talked a lot about the Follow Me tool in the last few weeks. So that's this tool over here on the left-hand side of the page. Um, you can find it in your large tool set on the desktop version of SketchUp, but now we're gonna use it to start creating pipes along paths. But if we come in here and select this path, activate the follow me tool, and then click on this, notice how it's not really giving us the best result in the world, right? I mean, it works, but what's happening is your pipe doesn't curve to follow this path. In this case, what it does instead is it just like turns at 90 degrees, right? And so what we wanna do in order to get a smoother turn is we wanna draw an arc. So let's say I was to draw a four inch line right here and then draw an arc along this corner, and I wanna do this until we get to this corner, and double click, but then if I erase out this edge, and we extrude along that path, then we're gonna get a much smoother result, right? Now, this pipe curves instead of just turning at 90 degrees. So if you want smooth pipes in here that follow along with curves, then um, modeling out that little curve piece in here can give you a much better result. So now, if I select this entire path right here and use the follow me tool, notice how I'm getting a much smoother, nicer result right here. And so now let's talk a little bit about how we might add different flanges and parts and pieces to this pipe. So if we look at this pipe right now, it's really boring. And so if we think about piping in the real world, if we just look at pictures of them, it usually has a bunch of just different flanges and other things that are on there where the different pipes come together. So you also have things like your valves and other things like that, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what we wanna do is we wanna start by adding some flanges to this piping. And so there's a few different ways you can do this. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to just take the end piece right here and just use the move tool in copy mode to copy it, copy it along your pipe. So you tap the M key, single click, and then tap control in order to copy it. Now you do wanna make sure that you're going along an axis and that it's staying perfectly centered on your pipe right here. But what that allows us to do is that allows us to offset this out like this. So if I offset this out half an inch, what that does is that gives me the, the ability to come in here and model a flange piece. And so one thing I want you to be aware of is notice how when we move this over and push pull it, it's giving us this geometry in here. So you've got these different edges in here that you would have to like soften or hide in order to make this look better. What you can do instead is you can double click on this face and then do a shift click to deselect this, and then you can right click and click on the option to weld edges. And so what was happening is the circle that we had in here before had been split into individual pieces. Well, when you push pull a circle that's been split into individual pieces, it gives you these unhidden lines. But if you weld the edges, so notice how this is now a complete curve. Then if you push pull this, notice what it's gonna do is it's going to give you the smooth flange right here. So we can use this in order to model this one flange part. And usually what I'll do once I've modeled it is I'll group it. That way I can move it around on here without actually affecting the whole pipe like this. So if I do decide to adjust it, I can do that. And then you do wanna be a little bit careful because if you move this, then you've got a gap in your circle, which is pretty easy to fix. You can just draw a line along one of these edges right here. And then you can just push pull it across like this. And then you can erase out this edge. So it's pretty easy to heal that, but now you've got this one flange in here. Well, what I might wanna do is I might wanna create a second flange like this that kind of backs up to it. So I could use the move tool in copy mode in order to do that. So I can use this in order to take these two flanges and put them together like this. So another way that we can do this, because over here, this is easy, right? You can just take this face and you can just move it and copy it along here um, in order to create those different flange pieces. Let me go ahead and make another copy of this. Again, I wanna make sure that I'm moving it right along the green axis right here. But 
another thing that you can do is let's say that you wanted to flange like right on the edge of this curve right here. Well, that can get a little bit complicated because we don't have a circle that we can copy along this surface. But what we can do is we can come in here and we can find a point where we want to add a flange. So, and I might turn my hidden geometry on just so I can see this. Um, so I'm gonna go into my display I'm gonna to toggle hidden geometry right here, just so I can see where this starts to go. Well, you could, just so I can see the geometry that makes up this edge. So you could either select this piece of geometry right here, which is gonna be easier if you go into like a top down view and you turn your perspective off, then you're not actually gonna pick, you're, then you're not gonna accidentally pick something else up. So you could use the move tool in copy mode and copy that, but notice how that's not perfectly straight, so it's a little bit problematic. But what you could do instead is you could just come in here and tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna draw a rectangle that intersects with this face. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing it right here. And notice how I locked it to that red axis by tapping the left arrow key. But then I'm gonna tap the control key and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle up like this. And so the reason I drew a rectangle up like this is now I can come in here and I can select my pipe and I can right click on it and click intersect faces with model. And so when I do that, and now I can erase this rectangle out because I don't need it anymore. And so notice what this did is this intersected the face of my pipe with that edge or with that face right there. So now I have a surface that I can extrude out and I think I'm probably gonna have to weld it again, but that's okay. But now I can make this a group then I can double click in here and I can add my flange really quickly. I'm gonna turn perspective mode back on, there we go. And so that's one easy way to add that additional geometry in here in order to add things like those flanges. And so let's say we wanted to add some additional detail to these flanges. Like let's say that I wanted a bolt on either side of these, right? Because a lot of the time you're gonna have different bolts in here that kind of make this up. Well, what I would do in this situation is I would draw a circle on this surface. And I usually try to find like the middle point right here. So I'm tapping the C key in order to draw a circle, but remember that I can set the number of sides that my circle has. If you look in the lower right hand corner while you have the circle tool active, notice how I can type in something like six. Well, notice how when I type in a value of six, what that did is that changed my circle into a six sided circle right here. Well, what that means is that means I can use this in order to quickly model out a bolt shape like this. So we're gonna model this out and it's going to look like a bolt head right here. And I'm gonna take that whole thing, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna make it a component. And we can just call this bolt. Well now, it's very easy for me to come in here and find the central point with the rotate tool. So tap the Q key, move your mouse over here and find the middle. I wanna make sure I tap the left arrow key to lock it to the screen axis. But now what I can do is I can either rotate this or do what I wanna do, which is tap the control key in order to go in copy mode. And so when I go in copy mode, that's gonna allow me to create a copy of this object along a certain angle. Well, in this case, I want that angle to be 45 degrees, and then I can click. And so notice how when I place this, I haven't clicked anywhere else. I can type in times or star, and let's say eight right here. So I can type in times eight and hit the enter key. Well, notice what that did is it created eight copies right here. So then what I could do is I could take all of those and I could copy them over here. But honestly, there's an easier way to do that, which is I wanna take all of those and I wanna do a control X to cut them. And I wanna double click inside of this object and I want to right click and do a paste in place. And so what that did is that pasted these inside of this flange object, right? Now they're all a part of this object. Well, what that means is that means that instead of me creating a copy over here that's just a copy of a group, I can right click on this and make it a component and we can call this flange. And then I can use the move tool in copy mode and I can copy this as many times as I'd like. So I'm gonna make a copy, then I'm gonna scale it to negative one and move it back over here. 
like this. And those got added in there because we did our uh, intersect faces with model. So again, you can just come in here and you can just delete these out. Just make sure that you're not picking up the face that's in there, make sure you're just picking up those edges and then you can clean that up really easy. But then now you've got this ready-made flange in here. Well, now you can copy it as many times as you want along your path. And usually what I like to do is I like to find this top point and move it along the top of this object right here. That way I kind of know um, that I'm moving it so that it's gonna stay level and aligned with my pipe. And so let's say that we wanted to remove part of our pipe and add like a smaller piece of pipe or something like that. Well, what we could do is we could just use our geometry on the end again, and I'm just gonna use the move tool and copy mode again. And I wanna make sure that I pick up just the edge. So I'm gonna do a double click and then a shift click. But then I'm gonna use the move tool and copy mode and create a copy over here. And you can kind of move this along your surface as long as you're making sure to stay aligned with the pipe itself along the green axis. But what you could do is you could create another copy over here like this. And notice how that splits that face because this stayed perfectly aligned over here. Well, then I could just delete this out, right? So I've deleted this out. Well, now what I can do is I can come in here and I can draw a line across this face in order to fill it in. And I might do the same thing over here and you can actually draw it on the edge as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to offset this in using the offset tool, using the offset tool. So tap the F key, offset it in, and then push pull this over. And again, if you get those extra edges in here, just right click and do a weld edges. But then I'm gonna push pull this over. I'm gonna offset it in again. I'm gonna push pull it over again, like this. And what you can do is you can take all of this geometry. So just make sure that you're picking up this geometry right here. And you could use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy and then scale it to negative one. And then I'm gonna pick the very top point of this and align it with the top point right here. And then I can just take this and just push pull it across like this and delete out that central point right here. And so now I wanna add a valve right here. So something that comes up that I can turn in order to turn the water off. And so there's a few different ways to do this. Again, I usually like to turn the hidden geometry on so I can find my top point right here, but I'm just gonna draw a little line up right here. And then I'm gonna draw a circle. And the circle is going to have 24 sides. And I might go into a top view for this and turn perspective mode off so this is straight on. But then I'm just gonna draw a circle to whatever I want the width to be of my flange piece. You don't want it to be wider than this pipe. Otherwise, you can kind of do whatever you want with this. But what I'm gonna do, and actually it kind of helps to start from that angled view so you can make sure you're picking up the right thing. But I'm gonna push, pull, or I'm gonna draw the circle right here like this, and what that's done is that's given me a flat face that I can work with. And in the case of this particular piping, I'm just gonna take this, I might put it in a group, because I don't know if I actually want this geometry to like merge with itself, but I'm just gonna push pull this down so that it intersects with my pipe, like this. So I'm just gonna push pull it straight through the pipe, and I don't really care that it continues on the inside, right? If I hide this and look at it, it's actually continuing through. I don't really care because I'm not gonna see that, so it's not a big deal to me. But now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to model out this pipe riser. So I'm gonna double click in here. I'm gonna use the offset tool to add a couple inward offsets like this. So just to kind of build the whole thing up, And then I'm gonna push pull it way in so that this becomes a part of a handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push pull this up like this. So I've got kind of the stem of this little flange right here. Well then, well then I'm gonna model my wheel. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy of this face that's up and we can move it back down in a minute. I just want this to be kind of separate so that all the geometry isn't merging with that face down below. But basically I'm going to 
push pull this out and I'm gonna extrude this up a little bit so I've got kind of this central point of a circle. Well then, what I can do is I can come in here and I'm gonna turn my hidden geometry on again. And again, this is just me finding the geometric points that are on the ends in here so that I can model from them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line out. I'm gonna draw a little circle that's aligned on the green axis like this. And we can toggle that hidden geometry back off. But I'm gonna make this a group and then I'm gonna push pull it in and out a little bit like this. And we'll mess with that a little bit more in a second. But before I do that, what I wanna do is I want to use the offset tool to create a copy of this circle that's out here. And so I basically want this to be whatever the width of the wheel that goes on top of this is going to be. And I'm just creating a path right now. But then once I create that path, and we can actually go into our circle and we can add segments. So I'm gonna make this a 48 segment circle so it's a little bit smoother, but then you can use the circle tool. So tap the C key, tap the left arrow key, and give this whatever thickness you'd like it to have, maybe something like this, but then we can use the follow me tool and we can select this path, activate follow me, and then click on this right here in order to create the handle, All right? So I've got the handle in here. And to me, that's a little bit big. So I'm actually gonna undo that and scale it down a little bit then try again. And then I'll turn my hidden geometry on so that I can find an inference point. But I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna align it right here. And then I'll toggle my hidden geometry back off. But then we can take this object and push pull it through our circle like this. And then we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So tap the Q key, find the central point right here, and tap control to go into copy mode. But then I want to create four copies or three copies at 90 degrees. So we'll do this at 90 degrees and we'll type in times three. And we'll call this good. And then we're just going to take this whole assembly piece. We'll put it in a group. And then we'll move it back down like this. So then once you understand the principles behind this, this actually gets really interesting because you can start building out modular parts and pieces too. So parts and pieces that are all kind of built to fit together. So in this case, right, say that you wanted some pipes that were going to fit together like this. Well, you could just take the parts and pieces that you've built and just align the points like this. So you can just put them together and then you can have kind of like these pre-built systems that you can use in order to create piping systems like this. All right, so I'll link to the next video in this series on this page as soon as it's ready to go. Hopefully this gave you a better idea of how circles and geometry work together inside of SketchUp. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.